What's up, y'all? Another Bible study, Bible reading, John 2. God's been revealing so much to me. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. It, it's un, it's really unbelievable. Like once, uh, when the Spirit reveals this stuff to you, all I can say is stay in the Word, stay in prayer. Trust God. But let me get into this. Now there's a lot of, uh, like the whole Old Testament. It, there's types and shadows of Jesus' first coming on earth. Types and shadows of the end times. All kind of stuff. Now this is, and that that's foreshadowing. Now this right here is the opposite. This is backshadowing. John two, at least the beginning of this. John two. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Now a day to the Lord is uh, is a thousand years. The third day was three thousand was uh one thousand BC. It says there was a wedding. In one thousand BC Israel was united as a nation under King David. They took over Jerusalem and brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. On the third day there was a wedding in Canaan of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Now this, this is interesting because I, I, I just, this just came to me just now. Uh, on the, in Hosea, there's a prophecy that says, after two days, after 2,000 years, he will revive us. Speaking about 2,000 years since the time of Christ, which we're coming up on right now. And the third day, he will raise us up. Now this says on the third day, there was a wedding. On the third day, there's going to be the wedding feast of the Lamb as well. So it's foreshadowing and backshadowing. <laughs> On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, which would represent Israel, or the Jews. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. The disciples are going to be the bride of Christ, out of the house of Israel, Christians, true believers, the Church of Philadelphia. Now this is going to get crazy in a minute. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what, that, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for for the custom of Jew, Jew, for the Jewish custom of purification, six six stone water pots. Six, that's six thousand years. Six thousand years until the second second coming of Jesus. Six thousand years of human history up until this point right now, which we're coming to the end of the six thousand years. Possibly from the next few days to the next few years. Alright, now there are six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, containing 20 or 30 gallons each of water. 
Water represents people, and that's defined in Revelation. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots, fill the water pots with water. So they filled, filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. Drawing some of the water out, drawing some of the people out, taking it to the head waiter, which is God the Father. So they took it to him. When the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine, and wine is defined as doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, the the true, the good wine. When the head waiter ta when the head waiter tasted the water which had become wine, and did not know where it came where it came from. But the servants who, who had drawn the water knew. Servants uh, would be angels who drew the, drew the water, drew the people out. The head waiter called the bridegroom, which would represent Jesus, and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, and then when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Out of the 6,000 years. Because no one has ascended. To heaven yet. Everyone's in the grave. Until the resurrection. This is the resurrection. When the water is drawn out. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. See, all this ties together. The Bible is so connected. The Bible is unbelievable. Once you really dig in and start start seeing seeing the things, when, when once the Spirit starts showing you the things, so connected to to the future, what's going to happen to things that have happened in the past, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from the New Testament to the Old Testament. Most incredible book. You just gotta look look at things like like read this read this with your mind on like the end times and the things that are gonna happen. After this, he went down to Capernaum, his mother, and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there a few days. I don't know if that's connected to anything or not. Along with this next part. Maybe connected. This is pretty much the whole the whole book. Pretty much the whole Bible is connected in different ways. The Passover the the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who were selling oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers seated at the tables and he made a scour scourge of cords he made a whip and drove them all out of the temple with the sheep which can, which can represent people, believers and the oxen and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables and to those who were selling doves, he said, Take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of business. His disciples remembered that it was written, 
zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign do you show us as your authority for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now we know what that represents based on what I'm about to read here in a second, but three days from that time would be the end of the millennial reign. But I believe I believe Jesus is going to build the temple in the in, in the millennial reign. The first temple, Solomon's temple, was destroyed in 586 B.C. So maybe, and also uh, in one of the extra biblical books, or one of the apocryphal books, I don't I don't remember, but it says when when the Babylonians came and destroyed the temple. It says that God didn't want want them to actually destroy the temple, so he had he had angels come in and and break down the wall, so so it wouldn't be destroyed by man. But destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. From 586, three days, three thousand years would be about halfway through the millennial reign. The Jews then say, it took 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. So when, so when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name observing his signs which he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, was not entrusting himself to them, for he knew men, for he knew all men. And because he did not need anyone to testify concerning man, for he, for he himself knew what was in man. The evil. That's the end of John 2. God bless you guys.